Hello everybody, this is Russ Buecher with Control My Joystick and let's take a look at how we can add joysticks to Control My Joystick. Originally Control My Joystick started out using only 3D connection space mice and space navigators, but recently we've added uh, joystick support as well. You can actually have a mix of DXWare uh, devices and as many joysticks as you like and then pick and choose from the different axis and buttons on these various devices and send that out in the TetherScript virtual joystick uh, driver to the game. So let's see how we do this. I'm just gonna create a new uh, profile. So I'll go new, I'll just call it A. Okay, so first of all, we want input. See, there's voice, there's the uh, DX word drivers. But let's go over to HID, this is human interface devices. And that's where we're going to find your joystick. So we need to add a device. So I'm going to go add. Now I have three joysticks plugged into my computer right now. And so I'm going to select this one here. So this is Thrustmaster joystick. This is a pretty good joystick. It has a slider, hat switch, a whole bunch of buttons on it. And when you Add a joystick, it gives the default curve group, and you can learn more about these curves in our uh, curve tutorial video. And you can right click on this and go edit, show the axis values. You can also enable some smoothing. So if there's a little bit of uh, jitter on this particular uh, joystick, then that uh, will help smooth that out. But it comes at the penalty of a bit of uh, input lag. So for example, here you could see this vertical line here is no longer completely vertical. The lower half lags a little bit. The top half is a raw input. The bottom half is the uh, smoothed and curved output. So the smoothing is introducing a bit of lag. So if I go back here and go edit, and it'll become more pronounced if I do this, is way too much smoothing. You can see how it's smoothing it out. Now this bottom value here is what's going to wind up in the output joystick driver. So this is what's going to be sent to the game. So if I move this back on the input, see this is the TX. I'm just gonna bring this uh, smoothing back to normal. I shall just turn it off. If I want that to appear in the game, I'm gonna to need to set our joystick driver to use it. So the input was TX. I'm gonna say, I want this TX output to use that axis from the T16000M joystick. So now when I move it, it moves. Look at the input and look at the output. And this allows me to mix and match. So let's add some more joysticks. If I go back to input, hid, add, let's put in Logitech Extreme, put in this cheap uh, Thrustmaster knockoff. And when I select them, I have a separate set of curves and curves groups for each device. So here's what I have for Logitech. And take a look at this Logitech. See that jitter? You see the vertical line here is moving. I'm not touching the controller, so that means that it's not the highest quality controller. And unfortunately, this was the most expensive uh, joystick that I bought. So what I would do here in a curve is I would introduce possibly a, uh, a dead zone, maybe a little bit of trim, or this might be one where I should use a bit of smoothing. Let's see what happens to smoothing. I'll turn it on. Still jitters quite a bit. Yeah, I think you'd have to put a dead zone on this one. I'll crank it up a little bit more and see what happens. You see the bottom one isn't moving quite as much, but it's still bad. And there's really not much you can do about this. That's just the quality of the joystick. And you can see how it's flicking around. These joystick, I mean, sometimes you just grab it, move it around, let go of it again, maybe it'll be better. Yeah, there we go. Okay, not the greatest, but it's what we have. So, 
Going back to this particular joystick, let's say I wanted the throttle of this particular joystick, of the Logitech Extreme, to go to the game. So if we go to the output, I'll go to the slider and take it from Logitech Extreme. So now you can see this is moving. So I have one thing coming from the Logitech joystick, an axis coming from the Thrustmaster T16000, and if I wanted to, I could go here and even do a third one. So uh, this is kind of an extreme example here. We'll go to this cheap one. Just has three axes, including the throttle. And I'll take its TY and put it in the output. There we go. So that's three controllers. Now, these by default are all mapped to the um, DXware controller if you have one. So you can see how they're already uh, still mapped there. So I have a real mixture of, of devices. But the point is you have all these physical devices that go through your curves and then are assigned to different parts of your output tether script virtual joystick driver, which is used by the game. Now let's take a look at the buttons. So if I go back to input, hid, and let's go back to this one here. If I press a button, it's going to appear here. That's button one, and that's like the trigger. I press a bunch of different ones. It knows uh, button combination. So if I press trigger and maybe another button here, it says it's button one and four at the same time. And you can have quite a few. Now you can use these button combinations as triggers uh, to run a macro. So let's go back here. And uh, let's make the fire button or the trigger button, I'll call it the fire button, on this particular joystick, the T16000, appear as an output button on the virtual tether script joystick driver. So I'll go to output, buttons, button one. I just double click on it and now it says press the button that we want to represent this. So I'll just Go to that joystick and physically press that trigger button, the fire button. There it is. It's button one on the T16000M. Click OK. All right, so now whenever we press uh, that fire button on the physical joystick, it's sent as button one on the virtual joystick driver. So everything you see here in this output on your joystick is what the game sees. Okay, so you can have uh, maybe certain buttons on one controller included here, maybe some other buttons on a throttle quadrant included here as well, and uh, really mix and match and set it up exactly how you like. So it could be that you want this particular button to just be passed through as a button press from your joystick all the way through the joystick driver and into the game, where it might be used to like fire a gun or something. But it could be that you have another button that you want to run a macro with. And so you can use it as a trigger. And uh, let's go back here to input. And let's say we're going to use this button here, button 08 on the T16000M. That's one that's kind of on the, on the base of the controller. And when I press that, I want it to just run a particular macro. So I'm going to create a macro. I'm just going to call it test. And as a trigger, I want it to just be a button. So now I'm going to press that physical button on that joystick. And it shows up here. It says that I press button 08 on this T16000M. I hit OK. Now I have a trigger. So now all I need to do is have a script of some kind. And I'm just going to do just a simple uh, text output. And we're going to have it output to Notepad. So I will enable my profile, set my profile to be Notepad. And Notepad's a great way to just 
you get to know how uh, this works instead of having to mess uh, with the control configuration in the game. Once you get it figured out and control my joystick, it's a lot easier to configure in the game. What's gonna happen here is I'm gonna press that button, a physical button on that joystick, and when I press it, the trigger will be fired and the script will run and write the word test in this uh, notepad. Okay, so here it goes. I'm gonna press the button now, pops up notepad, and it almost gets it all and missed the T. Let's try it again. Again, it missed it. So that just means that I need to increase the delay. When you have a triggering action and you run a macro, when you execute a macro, it needs to know where to send these keystrokes. And so that's why we have a target defined. But it's going to bring up its target, in this case, notepad, and kind of bring it to the front, give it focus, wait this amount of time, and then send the keystrokes. Notepad is pretty lightweight, so uh, 50 milliseconds is probably enough. Let's try it again. Press it. Still last. Made it this time because it probably didn't have to bring up Notepad. But if it has to bring it up, there it goes. That's a little better. Might even bring it up a little higher than 50 to be the most consistent. If you have a, a much more heavy duty game that you have to bring up, say a, a real game that is running, you might have to wait maybe three, 400 milliseconds before the game is kind of aware of inputs again and will accept your inputs. Now you see back here on the trigger, if I double click on this, I can re-enter the trigger again and you can have combinations. So let's say I wanted to have this one and this one, button eight and nine at the same time. If I just press button eight, or really do any other input, it's going to bring up notepad. And, uh, but I have to go eight and nine for the macro to fire. So if I go eight, eh, nothing happens. Nine, nothing happens at the same time now. And there we go. So let's look at that again. And, and really this gets to be a bit of a challenge when you're configuring because anytime you move the joystick, and I'm just gonna go like this and then move the joystick a little bit, you see how it brings up notepad? Because control my joystick knows you just made a control input, it's trying to figure out where to send it. So it's gonna send it to whatever your profile target is. That's why it'll pop up like this. And sometimes when you're you know, making your configurations here and you have to move the joystick around, maybe to edit curves, maybe it's a good idea just to turn this off so it isn't uh, kind of flicking to another program. I'm going to turn this back on and you'll see here that uh, which button is being pressed. Just button eight still brings it up, but doesn't run the macro. Button nine and these two buttons together. So you can do a combination of buttons between devices. You could have, uh, you know, one button pressed on your throttle quadrant, another button pressed on your joystick, and that is your trigger. It's so really, you know, kind of mix and match however, however you like. You can also have button down and button up. So uh, that would only respond to the down motion of the button or it would only trigger when you release the button. All right, so that's it. That's how you set up a joystick and the triggers and the output joystick uh, virtual driver in Control My Joystick. Have fun.